Good morning, Interweb. I just made a video with Bibliridian over on his channel, TLDR. He wants to do some speculative biology and he needed a planet. That's where I came in. Now, as part of that video, Bibliridian wanted me to do something like this. Basically, simulate continental drift. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to show you guys how to do this. So start by opening up Gplates. It's a free program. Links are in the description so you can go check it out. Hit Command L uh, to bring up the layers panel because we'll need that in a second. And let's just make everything look real pretty for a second. So this guy goes here, this guy goes there. This guy goes here, beautiful. All right, so I'm not going to draw proper land masses because it's going to take forever. Um, I'm just going to draw basic geometric shapes and that allow us to focus on the mechanics of making things move in G plates, which are horrifically obtuse as is in fitting with the G plates brand. So to begin, hit G for digitize new polygon tool. Essentially, it's going to be your drawing tool and let's make a hyper-realistic, beautiful square continent. So once you're happy with the shape, hit Create Feature Collection. Uh, for our purposes today, let's go Closed Continental Boundary. Hit Next. Super important here, give it a plate ID and remember it. So I, I usually start with 100. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, I'm going to say that this continent appeared in the distant past and it'll continue into the distant future. If you want, you can specify dates where continents appear and disappear. That's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, let's give it a name, continent A. Hit next. Don't worry about any of this. And then create a new feature collection. So go down to the save dialog option here and save this as, let's go to my folder, save this as, as something. Let's say continent a, done, and let's make it look a bit prettier, so twiddle down the thing here and go fill polygons. That's a nasty color, so let's go set draw style. Single color, choose something nicer, green, perfect. Now, very often you might want to have uh, islands around your main landmass and you might want them to move along with that main landmass. So to do that, simply draw those islands, so G, digitize new polygon tool, and let's draw another hyper-realistic island here. Again, when you're done, hit Create Feature Collection, close Continental Boundary. Now, here's the important thing. Give it the exact same plate ID. Any Everything associated with one plate ID will all move as one. So all I'm gonna change is the name, and I'm just gonna say Island 1. Hit Next, doesn't matter. And then associate it with your continent A by saving it in its same feature collection. Hit Create. Done, cool. Now let's uh, set up, oh no, let's save before we do anything else. So just a simple case of saving. Let's set up another continent, another hyper, hyper realistic continent. So uh, to rotate your globe, hold command and then just rotate, then just drag to rotate. Um, so I'm gonna say G, digitize new polygon tool. And I'm gonna make me a big old triangle. And I'm gonna go create feature collection, close continental boundary. Now. It's a separate continent, so it gets a separate plate ID. Let's call it 200. And let's give it, let's call it continent B. So we go next, none of this matters. And then we create a new feature collection. New continent, new feature collection. Create, and then let's save it up. Uh, so let's go save as, and we'll call it continent B. Perfect. And again, let's make it look a little prettier by doing some twiddling here. Let's go fill polygons. And actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it that green, that'll do. Just like before, let's make a, another island to move around with that just for the sake of demonstration. So let's do that. So realistic. Uh, let's go create feature collection, close continental boundary, same plate ID, change the name if you want. Next, doesn't matter. Save it with continent B, create. Perfect, and then let's just save real quick to make sure we don't lose anything. Now, at this stage, you think it'd be a simple case of just dragging around your continents to make the move, and it kind of is. It's just that we need to tell G-plates what's going on, 
um, which basically means we have to do a little bit of coding. But don't worry, it, it's not that scary. You need to open up some sort of text editor. On Mac, I use text edit. Uh, on Windows, Notepad++, I think, is the one to go. So let's open up text edit, a new document. Now, I need you to paste in a line of code that's going to be in the description of this video. I'm not going to explain what everything does here, but TLDR, the first column here, is your plate ID. So this is 100, 100. The middle column is a whole bunch of data that gplates can read and write. So don't worry about any of it, don't change any of it, just copy and paste it as is. And the final column here is basically just a comment column, so you can keep track of what's going on. Anything after exc exclamation mark you could change. This is a continent, whatever. Um, I'm gonna stick with continent A. Now, we have two continents here, so we're gonna need another two lines of code. So copy and paste and then simply change the plate ID to 200 and 200 and then let's in comments say continent B. Now, super, super, super important, this whole thing won't work unless there is a blank space after your last line of code. Why? I don't know, but that's just the way it is. So command S to save this and I'm gonna call this um, rotation. Uh, why? Because, and again, super important, you have to save it as a .rot file, .rot. Otherwise, gplates doesn't know what to do with it. So let's save this guy. And now that we have that code done, we need to load it into gplates. So we go Command O, go to your rotation file, hit Open, and there it is, the rotation file. So with that in place, we can begin to move things. So hit F on your keyboard for Choose Feature, and then you can simply choose whichever feature you want to move, and then hit P to move it. I think it's called Pole Manipulation Tool, is it? Modify Reconstruction Pole. Basically means to move me around. So let's go, this is our present day configuration, so let's go 100 million years in the past, say. And let's move, a whole command and drag, and let's move this boyo up here, say. And then let's give it a bit of rotation just by dragging around the edges. Once you're happy with that, simply hit apply. Don't worry about any of this, hit okay. And then let's go 200 million years in the past and let's say this continent goes, I don't know, um, here. Let's say it rotates more. Let's say it does like that, for example. And we hit apply, don't worry about anything, hit okay. And then we can save up, save and done. Now let's move our second continent, so hold command to drag the globe around, uh, hit F to choose feature, hit P for a pole manipulation tool. Again, this is our current day position, zero million years ago. Let's go to a hundred million years ago and let's say, I don't know, let's move this down south just, just because it'll make for a cool uh, projection type thing. So we go here, we hit apply, we don't worry about any of this, we hit OK. And then we go 200 million years ago, and let's say, let's just make a super continent. So let's push this back up here. Let's swing it around. Again, none of this is realistic, but it hopefully will demonstrate some of the processes. Let's swing it around some more. Boom, super continent, and we go apply. It doesn't matter, hit okay, save. So if you've done everything correctly, you should get an animation from 200 million years ago to present, which looks a little bit like this. Stunning, and as always you can go look at it in different projections, I can go look at it it's in Rectangular, or Mercator, or Molhuide, I, I don't know how it's pronounced, or Robinson, or whatever. Now at this point, you probably want to export this to be able to use it elsewhere. Again, everything in gplates is not obvious. Uh, so we go Command Shift E to export. So you think it'd be a case of just exporting some sort of movie file, but that, that's not the case. What you're doing actually is exporting a uh, time lapse, so a big sequence of stills. You can do that here, or you can just choose to export a single still uh, if you want to do that. 
So you can mess around with times here if you want. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, for our purposes though, we're just gonna set an export location. So again, let's let's make a new folder here. Let's call this export done, choose. Let's add an export type. Again, you can go explore all of these, see if there's anything that suits your needs. For me, I usually just go image and then JPEG and then I set my resolution. So let's say 1920 by 1080 for video, for HD video. We go OK, and then we go begin export. And assuming you've done everything correctly, you can navigate to the folder you save that in, and you should see a big load of stills going back from 200 million years ago all the way to present. So that is very basically how you make things move in G plates. It can be an awful lot more complicated than that, uh, but for now, I think that that'll that'll do. So. Um, go check out the video that Bibiridian and I made on his channel. Um, I think it turned out really well. I think you'd enjoy it. So links are in all the usual places. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it will be useful to you in your world building endeavors. Until next time, Edgar out.